Hey there, I'm Steve and welcome to Figure It Outy, a channel where I generally do project and DIY content on select A4 and S4 models, but why you're probably here today is because you're trying to figure out if it's easy to replace the front crankshaft seal on your V8 Audi, or might be a six cylinder, on probably a BBK, BAS, or BHF engine. And of course the answer is yes, you can do anything you put your mind to. Granted, there's gonna be some work involved to get access to that front crankshaft seal, but once you're there, it's just a matter of having the right tools or the right process. At the absolute most, you'll need these to do the job, but of course, at the very least, you'll need a front crankshaft seal. Now, be sure to check which part number your engine requires because there are two variations that can be used with this tool. There is a 70 and a 72 millimeter. This happens to be a 72 variation. And what I'm holding is a product from Victor Reigns. Victor Reigns is the OE supplier to Audi and VW for this particular part. And if you're following along real time with the installation, don't throw this out. This piece of plastic right here, according to Victor Reigns, is actually an installation tool. So in a pinch, you might be able to use this to replace all of this, even though today we'll be focusing on how cool of a tool this is. We're gonna kick off our project here using this Lyles 58430 shaft type seal puller tool. Now what I'm trying to do in this project with both this tool and the Audi VW Snap-on official part is try to replicate the most professional way that this job could be done. So if you were to take your car to the dealership or an independent shop, this is the type of practice that I would expect one of those professionals to use to ensure that nothing is damaged and the installation is done perfectly. That being said, I recognize that these tools cost money and I'll talk about that more in a second, but you may opt to skip part of this step. You might wanna use something off of your bench, a more simple tool or a homemade tool, and that's fine, I get it, but I just wanna show you both sides of the coin. Now, before we talk about taking this off, I just wanna call out that these are made out of PTFE. So it's not like a normal squishy rubber O-ring that you'd find in various other places on an engine. These are naturally a little bit tougher. So if you're poking at this thing, trying to figure out if you should replace it or not, don't do that just on the decision of how hard is it. Another attribute to understand of PTFE is its lack of elasticity, meaning it needs to be manufactured to spec for the exact application it's meant to serve. And obviously if it's leaking, that's a great indication that it's failing, but they can tend to oval out too. So just with the pressure and the heat and the oil behind it, it can open up little gaps around the crank and you can get some interior weeping of oil around here too and it's not going to conform back to a circular shape because of what it's made out of. When it comes to the removal, here are the two sides of the coin. So obviously we're going with the professional method, but you've probably heard of two other ones too. One is the screwdriver one, where simply you just slide a screwdriver under the seal and pop it out. However, the inherent risk with that is that you will gall the top side of the crank right here, and that is entirely the purpose of a tool like this, to minimize that risk. The second method you might have heard of is a screw. So some people will take a screw and just put it straight into the seal and then take a set of pliers and pull on the screw head to just pop the entire seal out. The entire premise of this tool is to use the engine block itself as a point of leverage using this bar right here once you've slipped this hook under the seal. Let's give it a try. So first you have to make sure that the bar isn't in the way when you're trying to slip it under. So. Oh, yeah, I can interfere. In we go. And it looks like I'm in already. That's cool. Rotate 90 degrees. Oh yeah, popped right through. Mm, interesting. You know what? I'm gonna use the outside of the block here, obviously, because you can only get something so deep in here. And then you simply push down. Oh, I busted right through the side. So that was pretty interesting. It looks like even though I shoved this hook in here, I didn't get deep enough in to grab enough of the seal to pull it out. So I'm actually gonna try a new spot and see potentially if I have to work my way around and push it in even deeper this time. That's in there. Let's find a good spot to pull against. Tighten this down and I'll try again. Interesting, you gotta find a really good spot to pry against. Mm, she's on there, good. You know, part of the problem is that I'm hitting the block with the handle out here. I actually can't find a spot further away to properly leverage against. Here's a better spot up here by the head. This is getting very interesting. So last time I shoved it in there really deep, it seems to be breaking off the inner part of the seal. 
So maybe this thing is pretty old and uh, she seems to be in there pretty good. So I'm going to continue to work my way around and see if I can't get this off. Up until this point, I feel like I'm using a can opener more than I am a seal puller. So you just watched me work all the way around the inside and I actually did slide the tool on the inner diameter of the crank here. And uh, I'm not really getting too far. It's not lifting out from the housing at all. And I think this is an indication of how worn my seal is, but the bottom edge is cracking. And granted, the seal is a, a U-shape, right? So a dry inner edge is probably going to result in what we're seeing here. So at this point, I can't necessarily blame the tool. Although I will say my early impression is that it's actually a little hard to use this bar. Kind of wish that it was a bit longer so I could have more range to pry on. I'm finding that once this is seated against the block, I have very little room between the handle and the block to actually push anything. So that would be a first impression, but I'm going to keep going and try to make this thing work. Well, honestly, I'm a little disappointed to report that I cannot successfully remove my seal with Lyle's tool here. Now, I want to address the condition of my seal. And granted, you're not going to be doing this job because you're wanting to pull out a fresh seal. That's not how life works. Yours is probably in a similar condition to mine, a little bit old, oil-soaked, and cracking. That's what happened to mine, essentially 360 degrees. So I won't knock this tool for grip because this hook actually does slip in here very, very well but it breaks apart these pieces to the point where I'm almost a little worried that every time I slip it back in, I might be pushing some debris into the crankcase. So I'm stopping where I am right now, but it's the leverage and dimensions of the tool that I'm struggling with right now. So I think if this was a little bit longer, and honestly, it's a little bit finicky to constantly tighten and loosen and rotate this part here, I can't seem to get leverage anywhere good. And I have obviously a lot of surface to work with here and I still can't find a nice landing zone and give me enough leverage to move the handle in a way that it moves the seal significantly. I'm just kind of picking at the edge. And so we find ourselves at the crossroad we didn't want to be at, but we tried to do it the right way first with the tool that's meant to be for the job. But the truth is you have to find a way to get things done and be a little crafty. So let's try the screw method. Well, it's hard to argue with results, isn't it? Now, in hindsight, two screws would have been perfect. I didn't have the strength to just pull straight out on one. I needed the second, so I did a little bit of pulling and a little bit of prying. And as soon as the seal broke on the top here, she popped right out. And for reference, this engine has 180,000 kilometers on it. And as far as my records show, this might be the original seal. So granted, this has been heat cycled many, many times, and it's clearly oil stained on the back. And for comparison, this is what the new one looks like on the back side of it. To make sure I'm arming you with all the information you need to do this project and to be fully transparent, I did not get away scot-free doing that screw process. So, because the PTFE seal has a very tough middle layer and you need to take a drill bit just to get a pilot hole in there to start putting the screws in, the moment where the seal breaks loose and the drill bit slides through, it actually hits the outer edge of the bearings of the crank right here and it did nick it just a little bit. Not in a way that's gonna affect any of the performance or the oil tight seal, but I did do some damage. And that's not great, right? Because every time you're doing a project, you're wanting to leave the car in a better condition than when you got there to start with and you wanna do the job right. So a little bit of damage was done and that's gonna be a downside or a risk of doing that screw method. Let's get on to the installation. So step number one is clean out your work area here. I've just taken a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag. I did not spray brake cleaner inside of here. And I just cleaned out some of the metal shavings from the back side of the old ring and just made sure that all the mounting surfaces are really clean. I'll quickly remind you that we're installing the 72 millimeter seal here, but the workshop manual from Audi says that if you're putting on the 70 millimeter, you actually need to apply a thin layer of Loctite 4204, which is a high temperature instant adhesive to the bore. So on the inside of the crank here and the outside of the housing. The objective of this plastic cap and the snap-on tool is actually the same. You'll notice that this plastic cap is tapered where it's wider on the outside, thinner on the inside, because in all cases, our objective is to actually expand the seal just a little bit so it is wider than the edge of the crank and to just drop it into place with the objective of not pinching the inner seal whatsoever. 
Victor Rains would have you believe that you can take that plastic part, which is already molded to the exact same diameter as the outside edge of the crank, and then slowly just push it with your hands onto the edge of the crank, and then pull up the plastic piece. For the purposes of this test, I'm actually in a bit of a pickle because I only have one seal and I don't want to fully seat this using the plastic method because it would risk integrity of the part itself. But let's get a feel for how this might work. So plastic does fit on really well. And I can feel it expanding as I push it up the taper. Oh, look at that. Right into the bore. Very nice. Getting a little tougher to push by hand, but I'm sure you could take a safe tool and start knocking it into place. Yeah, you know what? I think this method would work just fine, actually. I'm gonna stop here though for the moment and pull this out and let's try the snap-on method. Now let me show you what comes in the official toolkit from Audi or VW. You will find all of these items right here and they're all numbered. One, two, three, four, seven, eight two bolts, and then a nice little sticker pack. It seems like all official tools come with something like this. Somewhat useless, but I tend to collect them just as a little badge of honor of having some cool factory tools. But this number one here is called a assembly device. Number two is a pull sleeve, and then the remaining four are pressure sleeves. What's really interesting I notice off the bat is the composite material. So this isn't like plastic plastic, it's certainly not metal. You can see just on the pattern here that a liquid once flowed into a mold to create this, but I think it's like a composite. Very tough, really sharp edges, nice construction quality, and it kind of reminds me of the composite style water pump impellers that Audi and VW use now that aren't fully metal, definitely aren't plastic. It's just sort of like a, a tough, durable middle ground of material. Going back to the principle of a tapered method to slide the seal off of something into the crank, that's exactly what one and two is because this equals one plus two. When it comes to the pressure sleeves, you just have to choose the one that suits your engine and crank seal size. They all grow ever so slightly in diameter and are meant to be used with the two bolts to drive the seal nice and equally into the bore. Let's give it a go. So we have one and two together and I want to mount my ring to it. And I just need to pay attention to how this is gonna slide off because when I'm done this, this will mount up like that. So I need to make sure that the ring ends up being face forward like this. So here we go. Slides up the taper and easily onto part number two. One comes off. Turn it around, put that right there. And then the next part of the instruction is to take my number three part because this inner ring right here is the perfect dimension for the seal itself. This slides in like so. And then you just take two bolts and feed them through the back of here into two of your crank pulley bolt holes that are gonna be sitting there ready for you and you just tighten it down by hand. It specifically says to not try to tighten this using any kind of tools. Just once you seat the bolts. There we go. <laughs> the end of my sentence before was going to be, you turn them as much as you can by hand. Okay, and that's as far as I can do it by hand right now. The workshop instructions now say to slowly turn one half turn at a time each bolt until the seal is fully seated. I didn't apply any serious torque to these bolts. I've simply stopped once the pressure sleeve hit the edge of the block. So now I'm going to back these bolts out completely and take off all the tool parts. installed and it is absolutely perfect. I'll say right off the bat, the huge benefit of using this tool is confidence. There was no point where I was tightening this down where I thought, ooh, is it gonna pinch on the top or the bottom? Nope, I knew as soon as this cup was fully seated against the housing that it would be absolutely perfect. And the other thing is, if you were left your own device and using the plastic cap method, I know there's more room back in this housing to push the seal into. And if you were tapping on the front, trying to get it nice and even, but one tap too many, let's say if you're using like a flat fronted punch or something to seat this into place, it would slide in and there's no pulling that seal back out. You only have one chance to do this right and this tool absolutely lets you do that.
There's one more thing to talk about and that is price because them tools ain't free. And I really liked the double action that we went through today because we did a free version and then a, you know, factory by the book version. And I think there's pros and cons to both actually. So when it comes to removing the seal, well, we have screws, which are obviously free and you can find on your bench somewhere versus the Lyle tool. Now, to be fair to the Lyle tool, there are other seals on your car that you can use it for like camshaft seals up on the head and the way that you might be able to pry around those spots. Maybe it's easier. Maybe it's easier on a smaller seal itself than something big on the front like this. I don't know. I don't have a lot of muscle memory around this. This is the first time I've ever used that tool and it worked okay. Not to what I wanted, of course, but what I like about it is that you don't risk damaging anything with the drilling. That was the thing that sort of made me a little unsure of the screw method, even though it was effective, it worked and it was free. I didn't like the idea that I inadvertently damaged something. And that Lyle tool was $30 Canadian. That's what I paid for it on Amazon and I have Prime, so shipping is included, let's just say. And I don't know, I don't think that's bad value for the tool. I'm sure I'll use it again in the future. In this case, that I absolutely need it, no but I'm still glad I have it and I experimented with another option. Now for the factory tool to install the seal, I paid about $73 Canadian on the Snap-on website and I paid $40 to ship it here. It's brutal, I tell you, it's hard being a car enthusiast in Canada, but it's all for the love of the game. And that was expensive, but you know what? I picked that one, I do, because it gave me absolute confidence that I was seating that seal right and that's just not something you wanna screw up. Now for the plastic cup method, I guess the catch-22 there is, do you get one with your seal? I've gotten a couple of seals before for different things and they don't always come with a little cup like that. So if you have it, yeah, you could roll the dice and very carefully seat it and you'll probably be okay. But I love that factory tool, it works so well and I'm sold. So what do you think? Do you like one method over the other that I've done today? And what about the value? Do you think it's worth having those tools or to maybe take your chances with the free methods? Let me know if there's a different one that I didn't try out today that you've had success with before. Throw it all in the comments and let's have a discussion. Thank you so much for watching the video and I really hope it helped you either do your crank seal job or aided your purchasing decisions for the tools to do that job in the future. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again, catch you next time.